This next episode from our vault is from episode 117, where Fritz Gilbert helps us find meaning and purpose in retirement. Enjoy! Hi, it's Kathy, the host of the Rock Your Retirement Show, and I'm here with Fritz Gilbert, who's the founder of the Retirement Manifesto. And this is a blog, it's actually a finance blog, but we're not going to be talking about money. And it talks about the same things we talk about, how to help people achieve a great retirement. So Fritz, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kathy. I love your podcast and I'm honored to be a guest. And uh, you know, it's funny, you, you say I'm a finance podcast. Obviously, we won't talk money. I, I understand your your direction and, and I support it, by the way. I think you know, there's too much written about the personal finance side of retirement and not enough about the softer side. So I love what you're doing with your show. And actually, the more that I've written, I've been writing about three years now. And what I found is I thought it was going to be focused on personal finance, but I'm probably at this point, you know, probably less than half of my articles are focused on personal finance and the other half are focused more on the softer side of retirement because I've kind of come to determine as I've, you know, researched this and prepared for my own retirement that that softer stuff is, is actually more important, in my view, to truly achieving a great retirement. So I'm, I'm honored to be on your show, and I'm looking forward to spending some time with you. A little bird told me that you are going to be retiring in 2018. Is that correct? That is correct. Actually, it's kind of exciting. I just put a post up today. My official announcement at work uh, came out on Friday, last Friday. So 10,000 people that I work with got this people news, it's called. <laughs> and uh, so my post was... Uh, uh, it's official. My secret is out, you know, and I talked about basically the reaction that I've gotten from people at work. So yeah, it's official. June 8th is going to be my last day after 33 years in corporate America. And my wife and I, uh, we just bought a fifth wheel camper. We've camped, you know, all through our marriage with our daughter and whatnot. And we're really excited about getting some extended travel in and, and really being able to do some things, you know, together now that I, I'll be free from the from the grind of uh, 30 plus years of, of working every day. So we're very excited about it. That is exciting. So that is going to parlay right into our topic of it's six months before you retire. What are you thinking? So that's what we're going to yeah, talk I, about today. What are you doing perfect. now that you've announced? Like, how are you preparing? Yeah. And, you know, it's it's interesting. I, I've done a fair amount of research preparing for retirement. And most people focus on the financial, as I mentioned earlier. And if you look at what I'll call kind of retirement fails, you know, people that didn't have a good transition into retirement, most often that's because they haven't taken the time to think through the softer side of, you know, what, what their purpose is going to be and things like that. So what I've really been spending a lot of time, my wife and I both, and it, and it's escalating as we get closer and closer to the retirement date is really thinking about that side of life. You know, what, what are we going to do with our time now that we no longer have to dedicate our time to earn a paycheck? You know, what are we going to do that gives us that same passion and purpose, you know, that a lot of people get from work and we're having a blast with it. You know, we, we just recently moved up to a cabin up in the North Georgia mountains. So it's the Southern edge of the Appalachian chain. The Appalachian trail actually starts in the town where our cabin is. So we made an intentional move up there a couple of years ago in preparation for retirement. And, you know, we love the mountain life. We're going to be doing a lot of hiking. We're going to spend a lot of time outdoors. And, you know, we're really getting engaged in the small little mountain community and some charity work. And, you know, we're trying to build bridges now while we're still a couple of months out so that once we retire, we've kind of got a lot of things already started that we can, you know, invest more time and energy. And so it's a really exciting time and we're having a lot of fun thinking about it. What kinds of discussions have you and your wife had? You know, it's interesting. I, I've always been a little bit, not not hardcore, but I've, I've got kind of a type A angle to me and she's more of a type B. And, you know, we've had some pretty good discussions like, hey, are you, you know, are you really going to be okay with hanging it up at work and not going crazy at the house? And it's, it's, it's been some pretty good transparent talk about, you know, what is life really going to be like? And things like, as an example, I'll tell you something we're doing. And then let me finish the first thought. Um, the first thought is let's make sure that we, you know, obviously we, we're going to do a lot of things together, but we also both recognize that it's important that we develop interests that we do on our own. Right. So, so she's starting to develop an interest in pottery. She's, she turns out she's, she's a very good potter and she's done some, some really nice work 
taken some classes and she's starting to develop this interest in pottery. So that'll kind of be her thing. And she's got some dog rescue stuff that she's getting engaged with. And I help a bit on, on Saturdays, but she does more during the week. So she'll have a few things like that that are kind of her things. I'll have a few things like uh, there's a beautiful lake up there surrounded by the mountains. It looks like you're in the middle of Switzerland. It's absolutely beautiful. And I've met a couple guys who swim three days a week. So I've, I've, I've always been a, I, I really enjoy swimming. So I'm going to start swimming with these guys, you know, three days a week. That'll be kind of one of my things, right? So we're, we're talking about, okay, what are we going to do individually and what are we going to do together? So that's the first point. The second point, what are we going to do together? This is a neat concept that my wife actually came up with probably almost a year ago. We put a, a, a bucket or a jar, basically a cookie jar, in our bedroom, and there's a, a tablet next to it with little, you know, notepad. And each of us are randomly putting in activities. We're, we're calling it our Wednesday jar. And every Wednesday in retirement, we're going to pull something out of the activity jar and neither one of us know what the other one's putting in, right? We're, we're both trying to put in one a week. So if we do that for a year, each of us put in one a week, we would have two years worth of weekly activities. So we're kind of having fun looking around, finding things that we can do, each of us individually, but whatever comes out of the jar, we do together. So we're, we're really having fun with that. You know, it, it, it forces you to look around the area and try to find something that'll be fun and creative to do. And, and that's kind of how we're, at least initially, going about filling up our together time, at least with one activity a week that will kind of be predetermined by what comes out of the jar. So, yeah, like I say, we're having fun with it. I love, I can't believe your wife thought of that. That's really, that is cool. Isn't that an excellent idea? I, I wrote a post about it. I'm like, this is just such a great idea. I've never heard of it. But, you know, and, and the fun part is you never know when you're pulling that note out whether it's going to be one of hers or one of mine. And, you know, it, it's going to be fun because each of us will have equal say in what we do. And we'll we'll try a bunch of new things because to try to come up with 50 things, right, we're doing this for a year. So to try to come up with, you know, once a week, put, put an idea in the jar, that's kind of hard, you know, to come up with 50 new things to do that we haven't done before within, you know, like a two hour drive home is kind of our guideline. So, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. We're, we're looking forward to it. Do they have to be new or can you... Uh duplicate things that you yeah, I, I, enjoy. Yeah, well, I, I would say you can duplicate. We don't have any hard and fast rules. You know, I'll give you an example. One of the things we, we bought a little uh, two-person kayak. You know, there's a beautiful river that flows through the area and um, we've kayaked not nearly as much as we'd like to because I'm, I'm only up there on the weekends until I finish work. I've got a small apartment here in the city, so I have to come down for work. But, you know, so we've got our, our weekends together, but we, we volunteer on Saturdays at a dog rescue and we go to church on Sunday. So, you know, there's not really a lot of time to do free activities. Having said that, we have gotten out occasionally on our kayak and, and gone down this river that we just love. So, you know, don't tell my wife, but that's one of the activities I put in the jar. Yeah, we've done it before, <laughs> but we know we love her, right? So when she hears this, okay, surprise, surprise, one less, one less surprise when we pull it out of the jar. But kayaking on the river is an example of the type of things we're doing that maybe we've done some of them before. So that's okay. Would you have 50 of your cards say kayak? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Maybe maybe I'll stuff the I'll stuff the ballot box. I hadn't thought about that. That's a that's a good one. I'm just wondering if that's cheating or if that's if that's okay. <laughs> I, I think I think by the time we got to the third kayak card, she she kind of catch on, right? I, I think I, I think it would probably get overruled. I, we haven't we haven't we haven't worked out an arbitration uh, policy here, so I don't, I don't know what we're gonna do. But, yeah. <laughs> now you have you been putting in for the last three or six months or when did you start adding? Yeah, we probably started, I would guess maybe six months ago. So it's, it's good to start ahead of time. Otherwise it's put in, pull the same thing out, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even remember what I put in there, right? Like I'll, I'll see something and I'll be like, huh, have I written that one down yet? You know, I can't remember. Right. So I, you know, it, it, it the list is getting long enough now that even I won't remember some of the stuff and oh yeah, I remember when I wrote that, you know? So, and again, Back to this point of how do you plan for retirement, the, the theme of today's show, this, this final six months, how do you prepare yourself for that transition? You know, this is one of the things, now we started this 12 months before retirement, but the concept is there, right? And things like this that you, can, that you can build into your life that are easy to do, but they get you thinking about your post-retirement life, you know, I, I, that's really what we're focused on right now. And, and that's one that I think is, is pretty creative, and, and we're looking forward to starting to pull the cards out instead of putting cards in. Yeah, and will you be putting them in at the same time you're pulling them out? Uh, we haven't figured that out yet, but, um, you know, what we're either debating just... As you pull a card out, you put it into a different, you know, shoebox or something, 
and we'll know, okay, we've already done those. And once we empty the jar, we could just start you know, dump them all back in, start over. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I think, I think fair game if, if, you know, either one of us thinks of something as we're starting to pull cards out, if we come across something, hey, I'm, I'm all for, you know, keeping the jar as full as we can. So, I, yeah, my, my feeling is we'll, we'll just keep adding ideas to the jar, you know, forever. That's, that's just the nice way to capture some fun things. Yeah, so it's fun. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I, I, I love that. So, so, so far we have two things. We've got develop your own interests and then figure out what you want to do together. Yep. Are there any other things that you're working on right now, six months before you retire? Yeah, you know, one of the things we did, Kathy, we kind of put a timeline together and kind of as we get into each month, there's there's certain things we want to make sure, you know, we got to line up health care and, you know, all the other stuff that you have to get prepared for in retirement, obviously, as you leave your employment. And one of the things that's been on that timeline, we, we knew that we wanted to start camping. We we had a camper um, until my daughter was maybe a sophomore in high school. She's 23 and married and, and out of the house now. So maybe was that four or five years ago, whatever it was, we sold our camper because, you know, our daughter was in high school. She was busy with activities. We weren't camping very much anymore. So we said, you know what, let's go ahead and sell it. And then we'll just wait until we get close to retirement and we'll kind of get our dream fifth wheel. So we made the purchase of a um, fifth wheel just two weeks ago, as a matter of fact. So that's kind of the other big side of our retirement planning is getting ourselves set up where we can do extended travel. So we're starting to work towards that um, in terms of, you know, where do we want to go? How long do we want to go there? The first year or so is probably going to be a little bit restricted. Uh, my mother-in-law has Alzheimer's, and she's in a local nursing home. We're the only only family nearby, so you know we'll probably do trips up to maybe two weeks type of thing. But we we won't want to go on a six-month trip until we get some support to help out with her. So my brother-in-law is considering pretty seriously. They're they're actually coming down to look at housing next month. Uh, they're going to move to the area. So once they get moved in then we can take off and do some extended travel. So we're, we're having a lot of fun thinking about that. And, you know, we've built a, a list, kind of like our, our bucket list. We've built a list of all the states in the country. And as we come across things that we see that look interesting, we'll just stick them on the list. You know, hey, there's, that's kind of neat in Arizona. Let's, let's go do that when we get to Arizona. So we're, we're building up a list of some of the things we want to see. We'll be focused on national parks, the, the outdoors. But as we see things... You know, you, you do this for a year and keep your eyes open and, and be on the lookout for things like this. It's surprising how many things you can come across, you know. So we're we're building our, our kind of dream list of things that we want to do when we when we start hitting the road, you know, on a more extended basis. So Fritz, you told me that you just bought a camper. Have you ever heard of a company called Coolworks? Oh my gosh, Kathy, I can't believe you brought them up. I love Coolworks. I've been a subscriber of theirs for several years. I've said it to a ton of my friends. That's ironically something my wife and I have talked about. You know, when I was in college, I worked in Yellowstone and, and Alaska, different national parks for summer jobs. And we have talked for years. You know, we don't, we won't need the money. Well, let's but stop. Potentially doing... Wait, Fritz, let's okay. stop. You want to tell the listener what Coolworks, Coolworks is first? Oh, absolutely. I'm sorry. I know what it is. You know what it is, but the listener doesn't know. So tell them. Cool Works is an absolutely awesome website that basically lists seasonal jobs for temporary employment. It's organized by state. It's organized by interest, whatever, however you want to sort it. So you can basically say, I want to go spend the summer in Colorado what jobs can I find? And you might find jobs at a dude ranch. You might find jobs at a, you know, whatever, right? National Park. They have got thousands of jobs. And I'll tell you what, Kathy, I mean, if you just want to fantasize and dream, just get on their site and and think about a state that you'd like to go visit. You know, we've always loved like Montana, you know, Glacier National Park that are just go look in Kalispell, Montana, and you will find 10 jobs and it'll be like, oh, that would be fun. Oh, that would be fun. And, and, I, I would be surprised if at some point in our retirement, when we're into this long extended travel, if we don't park it somewhere at a national park for three months and work at a restaurant, you know, something like that is absolutely something that as we're able to, you know, with my mother-in-law situation, things like that, as, as we're able to get those longer trips, I fully expect we'll do some seasonal work at some really fantastic locations, all because of Cool Works. So definitely, your your listeners should, if they have any interest at all, you should definitely check out Cool Works. It's a very good site. And there's another one called um, Work Camper with a K, 
workcamper.com and, and it's it's they won't like me saying this it's not nearly as as well done as as the um the uh, cool works but it's the same theme so there are multiple places out there where you can find seasonal work well that is so great i'm um i just interviewed them today and I'm not sure if their show is going to be released before yours or after. Oh, my. That's incredible. I wow. know. So when you said you had a camper, I'm like, okay, I've got to bring this up. I think he'll really enjoy it. So I'm glad you've that already is, heard of them. Absolutely. That's a small world. And I will definitely make sure I listen to that episode. I, I listened to a lot of yours, but I'll make sure I definitely catch that one as well. And uh, it, what, a, what, a, what a great guest. I'm sure it was, a, it was very interesting to talk to them. So I'll be interested to kind of hear the behind the scenes of, of what they're all about. That, that's great. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad too, and I can't wait to find out whether or not you did any of that. Whether you worked on a dude ranch or went to a national park or whatever you did for your adventure. There you go. We'll we'll keep you hanging, and I'll and I'll let you know a year from now. <laughs> That's great. So we've got develop your interests, what to do together, put a timeline together. And we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll talk about all the other things that you're doing to prepare for retirement, which is upcoming within six months. Indeed. Yeah, so we'll be right back. Do you want to join in the conversation? Have a question that you need help with? Join our Facebook group. It's free, and we have fun in there along with supporting each other. Just go to rockyourretirement.com slash community and apply to be a member. Welcome back to the Rock Your Retirement Show. This is Kathy Klein, the host, and I'm here with Fritz Gilbert, who has a blog called The Retirement Manifesto. And he is actually within six months of retiring. So we're talking about all the things that he's doing to prepare mentally as well as financially and other, all the other things that he's doing. So welcome back. Thank you, Kathy. Glad to be with you. Well, what else are you doing besides the things that we mentioned? You know, the developing your own interests, figuring out what you're going to do together, putting a timeline together, anything else that you're doing right now? Yeah, I think the other area that I think is important to talk about, you know, if you read, I don't know if you saw that Harvard study that came out. It's very interesting. They they studied, I don't know how many hundreds of people for decades. And, and the whole thing was kind of measuring what leads to happiness and retirement, executive summary, I guess. But one of the key things that they found is how important relationships are. And, you know, we just as a species, aren't very good at really fostering relationships. So one of the things we're doing, in addition to the items we talked about earlier, is, you know, as I mentioned, we've moved up to this mountain town. It's a beautiful little town, arts and craft town, and, you know, activities every weekend, arts and crafts festivals, you know, music festivals, things like that. But it's also a small town, and, you know, we're new, right? We, we don't know anybody. We're moving into the area. So I would say the other area that we're working on is – kind of intentionally developing relationships, both together and individually. Um, I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. There's a neat old guy. This guy is about 80 years old. And we were at one of the festivals and they had a writer's booth. Well, I write a blog. I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I went up to the writer's booth and this was local writers, you know. And this old guy is there and he is basically a personal finance guy. He's written a couple books. He was a professor but he's 80 something years old, but energetic, you know, great guy. So he and I just kind of struck up a conversation. We totally hit it off and he said, Hey, we ought to go to lunch sometime. So, you know, yeah, I took him up on it and, and, and he and I go to lunch maybe every two months or so. And it's almost a mentoring type of relationship. You know, this guy's 30 years older than me and it's, it's a really neat relationship. It's almost like, you know, your father, right? He's my father's age. And, and it's a lot of fun to have kind of my lunches with Ed that I look forward to. But, you know, when he made that invitation, a lot of times, we, hey, let's get together for lunch. Yeah, yeah, we'll get together. And, and you never follow up on it. So we're, we're being very intentional on following up on opportunities to build relationships with people. We're doing that as a couple. My wife's doing it with some lady friends that she's met. She's going out to lunch tomorrow with one of the ladies that she volunteers with at the, at the dog rescue. We have some folks down the road from us. We live on a, on a real quiet little country road. It's a dead-end dirt road. And there's this couple down at the end that we just, you know, met. They were driving by one day and 
you know, we started talking to them and, and they're just a really nice couple. So we, we, um, they, they did a few things for us around the house. So we took them out to dinner on Saturday and we say, hey, we want to take you out to dinner to say thanks, you know? So, so we're, we're being intentional on, on getting quality time with other couples, with other individuals. And we're really trying to be intentional on building kind of a network of relationships. That, that's probably the other key activity that, that comes to mind. And you're finding these relationships just randomly or are you searching them out in your uh, church? You, you mentioned that you go to church. How are yeah. you, how are you finding them? Just walking your dogs or, or how do you find them? Yeah, it's, it's funny you say that the town is it, it very dog friendly town. Like literally the shops have almost every shop in town has a dog bowl outside their door with water in it. So their dogs, you know, people really walk their dogs. So we have actually met some people walking our dogs, ironically that you mentioned that, but yeah, I would just say as a general rule of thumb, we're open to building those relationships. However, they just kind of from serendipity, I guess, just develop. We are active in the church. You know, we've gotten involved in a local church since we've moved up there. And, you know, historically we've moved nine times with my career. So we've, we've, you know, been pretty transient and, and it's surprising how many really good friends we've developed over the years from our church family. So, you know, we, we are getting active in the church and, and I suspect, you know, we'll, we'll develop more. We are generating some friendships there as you'd expect. Um, but we're not limiting ourselves to that. You know, we've got a very, even already, you know, we've only been up there, I guess, total about two years. Obviously I'm in the city during the week, but over that two years, we've developed a very eclectic group of friends, you know, some from church, some from volunteer work, some from the neighborhood, some from, you know, walking the dog. It's, it's just a very random assortment of people. And we're fine with that. You know, I'll give you another example. This buddy of mine, Ed, he is active in the local rotary and, you know, he, I guess, I, I don't know a lot about rotary, but um, they have guest speakers. So I think each person in the rotary is kind of responsible for lining up a guest speaker every month that rotates or something. So he said, Hey Fritz, would you be willing to come and do a presentation to the rotary? And I was like, sure. What do you want me to do it on? He goes, Oh, whatever you want, you know, pick something from your blog and talk about it. I was like, okay. You know, I had a blast. I, I, I basically, and we don't talk finance, but I'll just tell you what the topic was. We talked about kind of the bucket strategy and setting up your money, you know, to be able to access it in retirement. That's all I'll say about the finance side. But the point being, I had an opportunity to, you know, present the stuff in front of 30 Rotary members. And after the presentation, you know, we kind of just chat together, a bunch of people. Well, a couple of the folks in this Rotary Club, I was like, man, you just you hit it off with people, you know, when, when you meet somebody and you can just kind of tell there's a connection there. Well, there were a couple of those types of contacts and, and I followed up with them. You know, I sent them an email and I said, Hey, you know, nice meeting you. You know, thanks for having me to Rotary. I'm looking forward to joining, you know, after I retire and, and I'm going to join Rotary. You know, I never thought I'd join Rotary, but it's, it's a good <laughs> group of folks and they have lunch once a week and they have interesting speakers come in. So there again is, is just being open to and paying attention to those opportunities as they present themselves to you. That's, that's really kind of how we're going about it. So is that going to be another one of your activities that you do by yourself? Or do you think your wife will want to join Rotary as well? Uh, that's probably something that I'll do myself. I don't think she has a lot of interest. I, you know, I don't know why, but at least in the crowd that was there, it was probably 80% guys and 20%. I don't know why that is, you know, but, but it seems to be kind of male dominated and it's mainly local business people. I just, she hasn't expressed any interest at all. I'll certainly invite her, but I just, I don't see her probably getting involved. I don't think, as I think about who was there, I don't think any of them were there as spouses. Ironically, I think it was all individuals, which is kind of weird, right? But, um, so that's probably something I'll do, you know, by myself, you know, my once a week lunch with Rotary, right? That's probably what it'll evolve into. And then maybe through that, we'll develop friendships with somebody that maybe we become friends as couples, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. That sounds like a great idea because Rotary is like a volunteer organization, right? Don't they raise money and do things for for people, kids, whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, they do. And and actually it's it's pretty surprising. They um they they kind of pass the hat or they do something they basically donate a little bit every week and then they pile up this money and they and they make, you know, big contributions to different charities. So it's it's a honorable organization in terms of, you know, what they're trying to do for the community. So I'll find out more. Like I said, I, I don't know much about it. Uh, let me tell you something else, too, that just came to mind about how do you look for things to do post-retirement. Another thing that we're doing is 
there's a small little local newspaper up there and in every edition they talk about like activities and clubs and things like that that are coming up you know over the next coming week or two weeks and we're basically looking at that every week and saying oh look there's you know a such and such a club or you know there there's different things that get advertised that we're kind of again being open to trying you know what the heck go to something right and you, you just go and you'll find out whether or not it's something that clicks with you if it doesn't click no problem. You just don't go back, you know, and if it does click, maybe it's something that you become interested in. So there's a lot of different organizations in the area like that, that have weekly, monthly meetings and they, they put them in the paper so you can be aware of what's going on. Things like the Rotary would be in there and, and other types of clubs like that. So we're, we're looking at that to see if there's some things there that we might get involved with together as a couple as well. And you're both young, right? Aren't you in your 50s? Yeah, I'm 54 right now. My wife's the same age, so um, I'll be just over 55 when I retire. And does your wife currently work? She does not. Way back, you know, 23 years ago when we had our daughter, my wife and I, we, we both always agreed she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. So before we had our daughter, she worked, but we never counted on her money. You know, we just said, okay, you're working just because it keeps you busy and you enjoy working right now. But, you know, as soon as we have kids, she'll stay home. So we never got ourselves to the point that we were relying on her income to pay the bills, right? So as soon as we had a daughter, she quit work. I, I joke with her. I say, hey, you've been retired for 23 years now. Although <laughs> never, never tell a stay-at-home mom that they're retired. I, I have a lot of respect for how much work it is to raise a, raise a child and important work, I should say. And she's done an absolutely beautiful job. Obviously we both do it. Parenting is, is done as a couple, but you know, she, she has been stay at home. She was very active in the school. She wasn't a helicopter mom, but she was involved. And I think in large part because of that, you know, we still have a fantastic relationship with our daughter. You know, she calls us very often, texts us every day. And, and, and I think a lot of that, I, I don't judge. I mean, a lot of people have to work dual income families. I totally understand that, but we really feel fortunate to have been able to, you know, allow my wife to be able to stay home. So she's, she's been home for 23 years and I've joked and said, okay, you've been retired for 23 years. You need to go to work so I can retire. You know, it's like the last <laughs> couple of years we were joking about that. So, yeah. It sounds like you've done some research on the softer side. So I'm going to ask you a personal question and that is, sure. have you discussed how you're going to be with her? Because a lot of times especially if you're in a high powered position and I don't know what you did before, but it sounds like you were in a high powered position. Mm -hmm. They come home and then all of a sudden the wife's kingdom is now invaded. <laughs> so have you discussed that? Or are you, we, we, we have actually Kathy. It's, it, I almost laughed the way you said it because uh, yeah, we, we've talked about it. Two, two, two things come to mind when you, when you ask that question, first of all, where I thought you were going to go with it. And then I'll, and then I'll answer your question where I thought you were going to go with it is when you've been kind of a successful business person, you know, there's a certain style that you use when you're, you know, your employees, you ask your employees to do stuff, they do it, right? You're the manager. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, I think you vacuumed and, wrong over there. You missed a yeah, spot. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we've already joked about that. You know, her line is, honey, I'm not one of your employees. You know, this has been for <laughs> 20 years, right? We, we, this has been an ongoing joke with us. So we kind of have a, we kind of have a, a way to deal with that, right? If I get a little bit, so there's kind of the at home Fritz and the at work Fritz, right? And at home we're equals, right? We're married. We're unit. We're, it's a unity. It's we're one. And you've got to treat that relationship differently than you treat your work relationship. So I think we've got that one pretty much sorted out. That's number one. That's where I thought you were going to go. On the other aspect of it, in terms of, yeah, she's been home 20 years. She has a very established process, right? And and we joke about it because uh, there's, I don't know, she eats breakfast and she watches some TV show. I don't know what it is, right? doesn't matter. But, you know, I was home and we were eating breakfast and, and talking about something. She goes, well, you know, you're, you're interrupting. Like, this is when I watch my show, you know? And, <laughs> and I'm like, so, so we joke about it. But I think it's, it's, it's healthy joking because we are kind of open to the fact that, hey, this is going to be a big change for her as much as it is for me, right? She's used to being home. We have four dogs. We're a big dog family. We love our dogs. And she has her routine with the dogs. You know, they, they go for their walk at a certain time and she you know does this when she's she eats lunch early and she does you know she has kind of routine things through the day and when when I'm suddenly home all the time that's that's where I think a little bit of that realization came in that we love each other obviously you know we've been married 30 years and, and it's a great great marriage but even with that 
there can be too much togetherness, right? When you go from 30 plus years of me being at work all day and her being home all day and you suddenly drop into the same house full time, that's a big element to this adjustment. And I, and I think, I don't know how it'll go. We haven't done it yet, but we're, we're cognizant of the fact that that's a change for both of us. And we have to be open to talking about when we're kind of stepping on each other's toes that so yeah we have talked about it so you have a plan so that it doesn't well we'll see <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to send you back to work she's not going to say no, okay no. you <laughs> no go back to I work can, i can most assuredly that that that's actually it's funny because my blog has actually gotten very successful and I'm, I'm being humble i'm just saying you know reality it takes more and more time right i'm you're on social media you're writing your posts and things like that and uh and she said, you're not going to be doing that all the time when you retire, are you? And I was like, no, you know, no, it's going to be our time. So we, we do joke about I could almost escape into my blog as a job, right? You could you could spend an awful lot of time doing that. And we don't want to do that, right? We're, we're kind of one of the, the other area that we've, we've talked about. I haven't written a post about this yet, but I'm planning on it is we're going to make a, a kind of a one-year obligation of, well, a commitment to what I'm going to call no obligation. We're having no obligation year. And, you know, I, people have told me I'm in a, I'm in a, a global job. I, I know a lot of people in my industry around the world and others that have retired that I've networked with, you know, they said, your phone will ring off the wall when you, when you retire, you will get so many people approaching you that want you to come be a consultant. They want you to come work for them, whatever, because you know that you're known in the industry and blah, blah, blah. And, and so we've kind of both agreed, we're not going to commit to anything for the first year. We're going to recognize that it's a year of transition and, and we're going to try to really focus on our time together, doing the things that we want to do. You know, we've spent 30 years with having to go to work that's gone. So let's really be intentional, especially in that first year of transition to not take on any obligations and, you know, they'll still be there. Maybe if, if they're not, then they weren't meant to be. That's fine. You know, we don't need the money, right? We're, we're at the point where we, we're not going to retire until we know that we're as comfortable as you can be, that we're not going to need money for the rest of our lives. Great. So I don't need to do anything for money. The only time I'll do something is if it has an interest, right? And, and the same for my wife. So be receptive to doing something if it gives you purpose, passion, those things we talked about earlier, but don't obligate yourself to do something until you've kind of settled into this new lifestyle and make sure it's something that you really want to do. That is great advice. Thank you so much. I see why your blog is take, you know, has taken off. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> Words of wisdom, to be sure. So that brings us to sort of the close of the show. Is there any other words of wisdom that you would like to impart before we say goodbye? You know, I, I would, except for the fact that you're doing it. You know, I, I think the people that listen to your show are probably much more attuned to the reality of this soft side versus hard side, I call it, you know, the, the non-financial versus the financial aspects of retirement. And, and I, you know, I would just encourage maybe even your listeners to kind of spread that message. You know, I think too many people today are still too focused on the financial side. And my byline is helping people achieve a great retirement. And I believe in my heart that the path to that is focusing on exactly the topics you focus on with your podcast. And like we've talked about today, you know, focus on these non-financial issues and really make it an intentional effort, especially in your last year before retirement. Because what I've read anyway, I haven't gone through it, but what I've read is just the process of doing that greatly increases your chances that you'll that you'll have a good transition. You know, recognizing the reality that you need to think about the soft side and putting some brain power into that before you reach that transition is is one of the best ways that you can ensure that that transition will go smoothly. So, again, you're already doing it. But maybe to your listeners, if they can tell a couple other people or, you know, if they're getting close to retirement and they're talking to some of their friends about the transition, they can they can preach this message of how important the non-financial aspects are, because I really believe that's the key and not enough people are focused on. Well, thank you so much. How can my listener find you? Where where yes. can they go? 
Well, I appreciate the the chance to do a little plug. Um, it's the retirement manifesto, just like the communist manifesto. It's uh, <laughs> uh, just look it up the, the retirement manifesto dot com. I'm also on Twitter, at retirement manifesto. I'm on Facebook at the retirement manifesto, and they can look at any one of those. But probably the go to place would be the retirement manifesto dot com. And I've got contact buttons on there. I've got you know if they if they want to sign up for my email, I only send one email a week. It's with my latest articles. And if they sign up, they get a free net worth template. So if, you know, some of your listeners aren't tracking, we're not supposed to talk finances, but you know, <laughs> they're, 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 there's a nice little net worth template. So if you're not tracking your net worth, you can get a free template that you can you can use to start tracking your net worth. And, I would, and you know, let me know if, if anybody does sign up as a result of listening to this podcast, you know, send me a note. I, I respond to every email. So if you get an email from me, when, once you sign up, you'll get an email. Just go ahead and hit reply and send it. And it'll, it'll come straight to me. It's just me. I'm the only guy running the, the blog and I'll, I'll get your email and I'd, I'd love to hear that you uh, you heard me here with Kathy, and, and I'll send you a note back. That's great. And we'll also have a link to it on the show notes as well. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been great fun. Well, thank you, Kathy. I'm, I'm privileged. I really am beyond words. And I, and I really uh, I consider it an honor to be on your show. And I wish you the best of luck as you continue to uh, help people rock their retirement. You too. Maybe we should talk with you again in about six months and you can, you know, after you've been retired for six months. So maybe the beginning of next year. That would be excellent. Yeah. You can tell us how it's going and whether or not yeah. all your expectations were met or whether there were a couple of bumps that, you yeah. know, that you were surprised about. That would be excellent. And I can tell you what my wife put in the little cookie jar for activities, you exactly. know, and I, cause yeah, so, yeah. And, you know, it, it's interesting because you think so much about this transition but you never really know, right, until you go through it, what it's really going to be like. So I'm, I'm fascinated and, and excited about the next phase in our lives. And, and I would love to catch back up with you and, and let you know how it's going. Hopefully it's, it's going smashingly well. But I also recognize it's not necessarily a smooth transition and, and there's going to be some bumps, right? So be, be adaptable to that. Be intentional and, and choose to be content regardless of the situation and, you know, life will be fine. So, yeah, let's catch up in a year and, uh, and we'll tell you how it's going. That sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. And for my listener, we'll see you next time on Rock Your Retirement. Bye. 